Hi everyone and welcome. Wonderful that you could be here today with me on Storytime 365. My name is Barbara and as we begin to look ahead towards Chinese New Year, today I have the perfect story about generosity. The book is called The Runaway Walk and I especially love this book because it's always a great reminder to give even when we don't have that much. This is a story that's been written by Ying Chang Kompestein, and it's illustrated by Sebastia Serra. Be sure to stick around to the end for a special surprise. One Chinese New Year's Eve, a poor couple sent their son Ming to the market. Trade these last few eggs for a bag of rice, said Mama Zhang. Then we can make some stir-fried rice to share with the neighbors. It won't be much of a celebration again this year, Papa Zhang said with a sigh. You'd think that by working for Mr. Li, the richest man in Beijing, we would have enough to invite everyone over for the New Year feast. Ming hurried off, eager to do his mother's bidding. It saddened him to see his hardworking parents being cheated by the greedy Mr. Li. As he walked, he daydreamed about what a real feast would be like and how nice it would be to have just one new toy to share with his friends. A small old man stopped Ming near the market. Hello, son. I see you have some eggs there. I will trade you this walk for them. No, said Ming, I need rice. Besides, your wok is rusted and has no handle. Just then, the wok sang out, Boy, boy, trade for me. I am more than what you see. Ming had never heard a wok sing. He thought, this wok is magic. If it can sing, it must be able to do other amazing things. So he made the trade. The old man sauntered off, chuckling happily to himself. Ming's mother wasn't happy. Why did you trade for this battered old wok? What are we going to cook in it? Before Ming could answer, the wok sang out, Mother, make me shine so bright, and you shall have food to share tonight. See, Mama, said Ming, it's a special wok. Let's do what it says, said Papa Zhang. We're all hungry. So Mama Zhang washed and polished the wok until it sparkled. Then she set it on the table. To their surprise, it rolled off the table and out the door. Where are you going? cried Mama Zhang. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's wife. I go, sang the wok, and it briskly hopped down the rope. The walk skipped all the way to the Lee kitchen. Mrs. Lee was overseeing the servants prepare the New Year's feast for her family. The Lees never shared their food with anyone. The walk plopped down on the counter. Where did this come from? asked Mrs. Lee. No one knew. Well, put it to good use, she ordered. It will make a nice serving bowl. So the servants put in the walk festive stir-fried rice, pork dumplings, kung pao chicken, steamed buns and walnut shrimp. There was still room for more. They added long life noodles, ginger fish, and rice cakes. Yet, still, there was room for more. Keep filling it, commanded Mrs. Lee. I must go change for the party. No sooner had the servants set the last bit of food in the walk then it jumped out the window. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go, sang the walk as it trotted down the road, brimming with delicious food. The Zhang family could hardly believe their eyes. They gleefully removed the food and set up a big feast. As soon as it was empty, the walk rolled out to their courtyard. Where are you going, cried Ming. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's son I go, sang the walk as it galloped away. The walk caught up with the rich man's son, Lan, at the market, 
who, though he had many toys, had never shared them with other children. The walk blocked the road in front of him. What's this, wondered Lan. I could use it to hold all my goodies. And without bothering to find the owner, the chubby boy grabbed the walk. Lan bought fireworks, toy dragons, cymbals, and drums. He piled them into the walk, and there was still room for more. So he bought lanterns, yo-yos, and kites. Finally, his weak arms grew tired, and he headed home. When Lan arrived home, he put down the walk and went to find his mother. No sooner had he turned his back than the walk hopped away. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go. It pranced all the way back to the Zhang's house with all the goodies safe inside. Ming bounced with joy as he emptied the walk. There are enough toys here for all of my friends, he exclaimed. The walk rolled over to the door and out of their courtyard once again. Where are you going, cried Mr. Zhang. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's house I go, sang the walk as it spun down the road. The walk arrived at Mr. Lee's shop just as he was counting the money he had cheated out of the poor people of Beijing. It leaped through the window and landed on the counter in front of him. Well, here's a nice pot to hold my money. Mr. Lee put handful after handful of gold coins into the walk, and there was still room for more. He dragged out a bag from under his counter and dumped all those coins into it, too. No sooner had Mr. Lee emptied the last of his coins into the walk than it jumped out the window. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go. It scooted down the road all the way back to the Zhang's house with all the money safe inside. Ming and his parents danced with delight. They invited all the poor people in Beijing to their New Year's feast. Mother Zhang served the food. Father Zhang divided the coins up among the families, and Ming handed out the toys to all the children. In the middle of the party, without anyone noticing, the walk slid out the door. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's house I go. It hopped to the Lee's house, where the father and mother and their spoiled son were weeping and wailing and blaming each other for their misfortune. When they saw the walk, they jumped up. There's the walk that took all our food, cried Mrs. Lee. And my toys, whined the boy. I'll break it for stealing our gold, vowed Mr. Lee. The walk sang out, I dare you three to try and catch me. The Lee family chased after the walk. Chubby Lan couldn't make it very far without losing his breath, and Mrs. Lee had trouble running in her fancy shoes. But Mr. Lee finally caught up with it. To stop the walk, he jumped inside, pressing it to the ground. Now I've got you, he growled. Wait for me, called Mrs. Lee. I will teach that walk a lesson. Mr. Lee tried to get up, but found that he was stuck tight. When Mrs. Lee grabbed his legs to pull him out, she slipped into the walk too. Chubby Lan finally arrived out of breath. Help, help, pull us out, cried his parents. Lan grabbed their legs but lost his balance and fell inside with them. Skippity hoppity ho, too far away I will go, sang the walk as it tumbled down the road with the Lee family inside, legs waving in the air. Dragon dancers' drums boomed, cymbals crashed, and firecrackers banged, drowning out the Lee family cries. No one noticed as the walk sped off to the distant hills. The Lee family was never seen again in Beijing. As for the Zhang family, they opened a shop selling walks of all different sizes and styles. Every year, they hosted a glorious New Year's feast for all of their friends and family. 
and to think that it all started with a rusted walk with no handle. Thank you for joining me for today's story. If you enjoyed it and would like your own copy, please see below in the description for the link. Please be sure to also check out the very special festive fried rice recipe at the end of today's story. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for another book. Bye for now.